will give you the details broken down in just a few seconds, few minutes. But first of all, I want to give you the overall view of what's happening in New York City where the mayor, Eric Adams, is being accused of paying an uninvited guest to his city debit cards that are worth $10,000. Now, he's giving these to individuals, not to families according to the report. Now, the report comes from New York Post, which in my opinion is a fairly reliable news source. Of all of the news sources out there, New York Post is probably one of the most reliable. So, we're taking our information from them. All right, let's drill down to the specifics. What's going on here? Number one, the mayor, again, Eric Adams, initiated a program to distribute prepaid cash cards to what they term migrants. I call them uninvited guests, costing up to $53 million. I didn't do the math, but divide $53 million by 10000 that's how many individuals are going to get this money. Number two, the program lacks publicity from the mayor himself and has led to public misconceptions. So the mayor is doing it. It's not like it's... Um, Undercover, sleight of hand, okay, maybe it is, uh, but he didn't do it in such a way that the public has an opportunity to complain about it. Now, typically, what will happen when governments do dumb things like this, they will have a public meeting which nobody attends except for supporters, and then if somebody... If they get some backlash, they'll say, oh, we had a public meeting and everybody there supported it. Number three, contrary to perceptions, the program could potentially become a multi-billion dollar venture with minimal oversight. So there are actually two things there. You know, they start off with these small programs like uh, the income tax was what? 1% on the wealthiest people in the country and now we're all paying it. Uh, we're all paying a lot of it. So they start out small and then it grows. Number four, the chosen contractor is a company called Mocafi, M-O-C-A-F-I. I never heard of these people, but apparently they're big enough. Well, I don't know if they're big enough or not. They may have an inside track to the Democrats. I, I just don't know. I don't know who they are. But they lack significant experience in such endeavors, according to New York Post. What, what contractor does have significant experience in such endeavors? I mean, how many of these endeavors are there? I, I don't even want to think about it. Number five, Mokafa stands to profit substantially from the program with fees reaching 50 million or more. Uh, I guess that's why they say it could become potentially a multi-billion dollar venture because if it's going to cost 53 million, and Moka Fa, the contractor, is going to get $50 million or more than obviously. The numbers don't work. It's like all of the money is going to the contractor, which obviously isn't going to happen. But again, it says fees reaching $50 million or more. We don't know what they're actually charging. Number six, the program lacks adequate fraud controls. Since when was that a problem in New York City? I mean, this is the hub of the mafia. Fraud controls in New York City have been kind of like uh, an option. If they exist at all, it's kind of like fraud is part of their culture. And that allows for potential abuse. Guarantee you, absolutely positively guarantee you that the mob has got their eyes on this thing. And they're going to be in line. No, nah, I'm going to perish that thought. What I was going to say is maybe the mob started this thing, but, you know, there's no evidence for that. And you know me, I don't want to start any rumors, do we? Number seven, there is no requirement for ID verification. And just like that, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I became an uninvited guest. No ID verification. I'm going to go to New York City, see if I can work on my accent a little bit, you know, and tell them that uh, I'm a migrant. Well, technically, you know, I migrated from the Midwest, so okay, I'm telling the truth in a sense. 
a little bit deceptive. And so I can say, I'm a migrant and I'm here to get my $10,000. What strings are attached? Do you have to spend the money in New York City? I don't know. But if not, I'm going to get my card and come home. Now, hang on a second. If they're not checking your ID, I think I'll go every month. Get myself another $10,000. I just live on it. But that raises concerns about accountability and misuse. Uh, yes, there will be a problem with accountability and misuse. These programs are always rife with fraud. Always. Um, I just can't think of any exceptions. Maybe there are. Number eight, the city retains full discretion over card distribution and spending restrictions. So there will be some spending restrictions. How do you, how do you manage that? So you can only buy certain goods and services with these cards. So you buy the good and service that is legitimate in exchange for a kickback. Then you take the cash and you spend it on whatever you want to. Yeah, it's going to be rife with concerns about accountability and misuse. Number nine, concerns include potential exploitation by criminal elements. We already talked about that. And the misuse of funds. Seriously, come on. Politicians dipping into the till. Yeah, that's going to happen. Well, I don't know. I, I don't really have a crystal ball. I can, I can, I really can't say the politicians in New York City are not 100% totally, completely honest. So I really shouldn't say that. But maybe they are. Maybe they're just perfect. I don't think so, but maybe. Number 10, the program operates under the guise of an emergency. Well, so, you know, that was the whole thing with the COVID thing. It's an emergency allowing the city to disperse vast sums of cash without proper oversight or accountability. So if you want to spend taxpayers' money, will and nilly just say, it's an emergency. Okay, what do we take away from this? First of all, I want to congratulate the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, for not pretending this is a loan. You know, like student loans, that's what the government likes to do. They say it's a loan. They're going to pay it back. And then once the legislation passes, what do they do? They forgive the loans. So it was passed. The legislation was passed as a loan. Then the legislators, in this case, I guess it would be the city council, forgive it. But they didn't do that. They just said, hey, we're just flat out giving this money away. So congratulations for honest. See, I told you, these New Yorkers, these Politicians in New York do have a little bit of honesty, a little bit. The other thing I wanted to take away from this is the mayor of New York City, again, Eric Adams, has been griping and complaining about being overwhelmed by migrants. Um, uninvited guest. Uh, he has been begging Biden and the federal government for money to help pay for them. And now he's giving away money. So I think I see an element of him being disingenuous, that he doesn't mind aliens coming into his city, but what he wants is to use that as leverage to get money from the federal government. How do we know that? Well, because it appears to me that he is paying an invited guest $10,000 each to come to his city. I thought the city was broke. Well, with a trucker strike, uh, it probably will be broke. But, you know, these are woke liberals. They don't understand economics. Or if they do, they just don't care. You know, if you're a Marxist, you have no idea how money works. But if you did, you wouldn't be a Marxist. The other thing I noticed is, speaking of the trucker's boycott, this is not a good time to be doling out taxpayer dollars. Because... You know, there are, what, three and a half million professional truckers in the country, if a tiny percentage of those who go to New York City, I mean, a tiny percentage of those who go to New York City, participate in this boycott, and they are. That's going to have devastating consequences on the economy of New York City. Is this a good time to be giving away 
$53 million, which will no doubt turn into billions of dollars, which they will beg the federal government, a.k.a. taxpayers, uh, in flyover states to cover. Yeah, I guess it is. For a liberal, I mean, if you think like a liberal, you know, we're assuming liberals actually think, or leftist, I should say. If you think like a woke leftist, uh, if you could think, they don't think about money. They just want more. I mean, that's all they understand. Give us more. Give, give me. That's, it's a give me economy. Where it came from, how it's generated, what creates wealth. They're clueless. They're so clueless, they don't even think about it. Then we have to ask ourselves this question. What else can they do? Whatever it is, they're not going to do it. And the bottom line is my opinion. You have your opinion. You can give me a thumbs down if you want. But my opinion is this is politics. They want Democrats. They want more Democrats. They're hijacking democracy or a republic by getting more voters because they know the people who climb over the border, that invite a guest, once they get them on the voter rolls, the dis a disproportionate number of them are going to vote for Democrats. So that's kind of the bottom line. Plus, I think there's going to be some money changing hands, maybe under the radar. Yeah, that's, that's almost a given, but, you know, I can't prove it, so I probably shouldn't say it. If you got something out of this video, join our family by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you think uh, it deserves it. Share it on social media because that helps a lot. And what do you think? Leave your comments in the comment section because we'd like to know. This is a new channel. We have very few subscribers, very few viewers. So when you leave a comment, typically, unless it's really bad, I read them and I reply to them. So you've got that advantage. See you all next time.